Welcome to Deadly Match, a murder mystery by Kelly Marshall. The stars of our story are Seattle homicide detectives Nick Winston and his partner Pat Strom. The two detectives toil through Seattle's dark underbelly, searching for killers who strangle, stab, or shoot their victims. The detectives are an odd couple. He's straight. She's gay. He's a charmer. She's no BS. They chide and criticize each other, but when the chips are down, Winston and Strom are back-to-back, protecting Seattle from criminals with murder on their minds. Here's Deadly Match. I palmed my badge and held it out as handsome Harry answered the door. His face froze in what could be described best as a holy shit I've been caught moment. His first response was, what the hell? Sir, I'm Detective Nick Winston. This is my partner, Detective Strom. We'd like to discuss your relationship with Valentina Cologne. May we come in? Harry's voice answered in a whisper. Look, man, I'm married. My wife's here. I can't talk. A woman's voice from behind him says, Honey, who's here? He looked back over his shoulder. He responded by assuring her, It's a salesman. He turned back around, his eyes as big as floodlights. I'm sorry, Mr. Garner. We can talk to you here or at the police station. You choose, but one way or another, you're going to be interviewed about the death of Valentina Cologne now, not later. Strom must have gotten it through his thick, bald skull. He said, give me a minute. I've got to explain to my wife. I'll be right out and we'll go wherever you want, just not here. He closed the door and we walked down to the main sidewalk to uh, wait for Handsome Harry. Why do you think he is so hot? We're not seriously going to have this conversation, are we? I thought he was buff, that's all. He takes care of himself. And you know he's not my type. Why do you see every man as a rival? I shrug my shoulders. It's a competition thing. So it's a pee in the corner, this is my turf thing? I wouldn't put it that way. You know, women don't get it. They don't have that testosterone. Even a tough woman like you doesn't have that competitive edge. We left peeing in the corner in the Paleolithic period. Now you're just showing off. Women compete with their brains, not their bladders. Strom always had to have the last word. Handsome Harry walked out of his house, quickly shut the door, and hurried down the sidewalk to us. The house door reopened and a blonde woman, about 30-ish, stepped out of the stoop. Dressed in tight jean shorts, they were dangerously close to exposing her hoo-ha if you know what I mean. She filled out her pink tank top in all the right places, and then some. Damn, Harry, why in God's name are you trolling date sites when you can get this at home? Go figure. You know, some men are just pigs. Mr. Garner, we're going to take you to the Seattle PD and ask you questions about the nature of your relationship with Miss Cologne. The man nodded like a bobblehead doll. He looked ridiculous, but mostly frightened. Harry was quiet on the drive to the PD. We let him sweat a bit. I was framing the questions I had for him in my mind and had no doubt my partner was doing the same. Harry had some splainin' to do. We led Harry into room one, like most interrogation areas in the PD. It was functional and bare bones. Gary painted cement walls. They looked like they belonged in a prison. A large two-way mirror framed one side, while a small metal table dominated the center of the room. A camera in the upper corner would record the interrogation. Have a seat, Mr. Garner. Before we begin, can I get you coffee, a soda, water maybe? He indicated coffee with cream would be great. Strom left to get the coffee and I eyeballed Harry. Was that your wife at the door when we left? He looked surprised by my question and answered, Yeah, that's Raina. I nodded my head. If you don't mind my saying, she's very attractive. His jaw tensed and replied, Yeah, actually, I do mind. Just saying. I wondered why you decided to enroll and meet your match. Guess that would be none of your damn business, he shot back. Strom entered and set the coffee down in front of our guest. He gulped and took a quick sip and grimaced. Obviously, the brew proved hotter than expected. Pat sat down, too. Out came her iPhone, and she started recording the conversation. I looked at her. What the hell is she doing? I'll explain later. So, Mr. Garner, as we briefly mentioned, we would like to know the nature and depth of your relationship with Valentina Colomb. She's a beautiful woman, and she left behind three young children. When did you first meet? Harry paused before responding and squirmed in his seat. Friday was the first time we met face to face. We had texted, and yeah, we sexted too. I thought I'd get that out there right away. As you mentioned, Detective Winston, we met on Meet Your Match. 
He folded and unfolded his arms across his chest. I'm assuming your wife was unaware of your relationship with Miss Cologne? Harry looked up briefly, his face showing embarrassment. He nodded. I started out with Meet Your Match last year. My wife and I had gone through a rough patch. She had an affair. I had an affair. It was understood we would see other people. So she was okay with you seeing other women? Harry cleared his throat. Yeah, well, she understood how it was. We wanted to stay together because of the kids. He looked at Strom. You probably know how that is. No, I don't really, Mr. Garner. My wife and I don't have children. Harry's face colored again and he muttered, Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Well, you didn't. That's all right. So you texted and sexted with Miss Cologne. Did you have sex the night you met her? He nodded. It was in the front seat of my truck. We'd gone to the Mariner game. It was a tough game, so the blood was pumping and we were feeling pretty good. I mean, uh, hey, she was a hot woman. I don't know if you saw our pictures online, but damn, she was be ilt. I saw Strom's lips purse, and I could almost hear her brain judging the shit out of this guy. We started some foreplay, and before you know it, she's sitting on my lap, and we are going to town. Did you wear a condom? Where was Strom going with this question? I gave her the look. She knew what that meant. Harry was quick to answer, of course I'm married. I'm not stupid. Strom's eyes got very big and she sucked in a breath. I knew she was dying to rip this guy open, but she maintained her cool. Good girl. I asked, and then what? After the sex, I mean. She had left her car at the Denny's on First Avenue South in Burien, and I left her there. Did you see her drive away? He nodded, then offered, You gotta believe me, I thought she was an amazing woman. I didn't hurt her. I almost believed him, but I wasn't quite taken in. There are psychos out there that would cut their mothers from asshole to appetite and swear on everything they hold dear, that they wouldn't touch a hair on their dear old mother's head. Yeah, right. Did you make plans to meet again? He nodded. Of course. I mean, we hit it off. I couldn't wait until the next time. Did Valentina know you were married? Harry flushed again and answered. The subject never came up. Strom rolled her eyes. Yeah, I didn't believe this BS either. While you're here, Mr. Garner, we're going to ask for a DNA sample. Are you going to do that willingly, or are we going to do it the hard way and have to get a warrant? Harry's jaw tightened up again. I think I should have talked to an attorney. Shit, the bastard was going to lawyer up? I said out loud, well, if you're going to be uncooperative, we might have to hold you overnight. That might make it a little tough to explain to the missus. Harry looked at me like I was a rodent he'd like to squash under a big construction boot. Never mind. I'll do it. Strom jackrabbited out of her seat, opened the door, and motioned to a CSI tech she had stationed in the hall. The white-jacketed technician strolled in and produced a tube with a swab inside. Open your mouth, he told Harry. Slicker than snot, the tech had his sample and was gone. We're going to let you go home tonight, Mr. Garner, but we'll be in touch. The investigation is just beginning, and we certainly will need to talk again. Harry stood and looked at the camera almost as if he was making a formal statement to the recorder. I wasn't the only one she was seeing, you know. There were others. You have names? Harry looked at Strom. Just one name. She mentioned a guy named Hunter. Works for Amazon. He smiled real big. He called him Jesus Shoe Granola Swankin' Mud Bun Fool. Said he had bad breath and wasn't going to date him anymore. Strom smothered a smile. Well, that's quite a description. No last name? He shook his head. It's getting late, Pat. I'll take him home. Well, thanks. Karina and I have dinner plans anyway. She'll be pleased if I make it home early. I pressed Harry on the way home. How did you hear about her murder? He was quick to answer. It was all over the news. When I saw her picture... I just couldn't believe it, and shit, I knew you guys would be come knocking on my door. How did it make you feel? I turned my head to watch his reaction. He stared straight ahead and said, it made me sick. Two kids with platinum-tipped hair played in the front yard as I parked my car in front of Harry's house. Yours? Yup. He said, that's where I stay. He looked over at me. I didn't kill that woman, detective. Someone else murdered her after I dropped her off. That is the truth. Yeah, that's what they all say. Out loud, I answered. We'll be in touch. On the way home, I realized I was near the neighborhood where Valentina had once lived. I stopped by a nearby Fred Myers and grabbed a few items. Camilla Vasquez's face lit up and she answered the door. Detective Nick, how nice to see you. She opened the door and motioned me inside. There he was. I gave Mateo a wink 
and he wiggled off to the couch and stumbled towards me. I held out the plastic dinosaur I had purchased at Freddy's for him. He took his thumb out of his mouth and grabbed the toy. He squealed with delight. <laughs> Across the room, Valentina's two daughters stood side by side, their faces crestfallen and sad. I didn't forget you. I dug in the plastic bag and pulled out two candy-locked dolls with rainbow-colored hair. The girls raced across the room and reached their hands for the toys. <laughs> Be sure to say thank you, Camilla reminded them. They said thank you in unison like they were twins. Got a jet, kids. Be good to your grandma. I swiveled around to leave, but Mateo grabbed my leg, and Camilla got up on tippy toes and pecked me on the cheek. It was hard to disengage from Mateo. The kid was a wrestler wannabe. He just wouldn't let go. I went down on one knee and rustled his hair. Be a good boy. Camilla pried him loose and wrapped her arms around him tight. He started to wail, so I made a quick exit, waving at them as I closed the door. All this loving made me eager to get home and kiss my girl. Deadly Match is the fifth story in the Winston and Strom murder mystery series. You'll find links to paperbacks and ebook versions of the previous mysteries on my website, kellymarshallbooks.com. Stop by and leave a comment. I love connecting with my murder mystery fans. My partner in crime is well known radio and voiceover personality, Larry Hines. He deserves credit for helping me voice and create this podcast. Say hello, Larry. Hello there. This is Larry Hines, also known as Nick Winston. I am the other side of Kelly Marshall's podcast. Like Kelly, I have worked numerous radio stations around the globe, and I've done voice work all over the place. Anyway, I also do narration on specialty programming and radio station imaging. I look forward to working with my radio friend on her book podcasts as we update our new readings all the time. Stay tuned for our latest adventures. Thank you for listening. Come back for the next episode of Deadly Match two weeks from now. Till then, stay safe.